walking around these walls. I thought by now they'd fall, but you have never failed me. change to come, knowing the battle's won, but you have never failed me yet.
There are only two times in the scripture in which we find Jesus weeping. The first is at the front of the tomb of Lazarus. Jesus weeps at the suffering of humanity. And the second time is found in Luke chapter 19, verses 41 through 44. Jesus is uh, coming into Jerusalem. There's a vista up there. I've been there. And he looks out at the, at the city. And when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, With that you, even you, had known on this day the things that make for peace. But now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you, and they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. The Jewish people were desperate for peace, uh, for freedom, And they thought that their biggest problem uh, was the Roman Empire, and so they rebelled against it. And some four decades after this particular incident, they rose up against the Roman Empire only to be crushed. Uh, The Roman Empire not only uh, put down the rebellion, but they dismantled the city, dispersed the people, and in order to uh, demoralize uh, the Hebrew people, they dismantled the temple brick by brick. So if you go to Jerusalem right now, there is no temple because it was destroyed on about 70 AD. You know, Jesus looks at them and he weeps for them because um, they were looking for peace in the wrong place. If they had only known uh, the time of their visitation, if they had only known that the answer to peace was in the person of Jesus who was with them. You know, more than ever, today is a day in modern history there where people are desperate for peace, for an answer. We know that this coronavirus is something that has come upon all of us in some way. And we try to find an answer through isolating ourselves, through masking ourselves. And ultimately, we want a vaccine, something that will um be a cure or uh, something that will bring us immunity and we're desperate for that you know a friend a pastor friend of mine made the analogy that the coronavirus is a cruel uh, thing and it 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 exemplifies sin and the impact of sin see the coronavirus not only brings about death but isolation when a patient dies of this horrible disease At the end, they don't have family members all surrounding them, holding them by the hand in their last dying breath, but they are isolated alone. What a horrible thing to behold. And so we are desperate. Jesus looks not only at Jerusalem, but us right now, and he weeps for us because we're looking for peace, salvation, while neglecting the day of visitation. That Jesus came some 2,000 years ago, And he had the antidote in his body and in his blood. And on Good Friday, he shed his blood. And on Easter Sunday, he rose again to proclaim um, that, that we have been given the way, the truth, and the life. And listen, church, listen, Christian, you and I have the answer that the world is looking for. That we have the, the answer, the vaccine, the antidote, And it is in the person of Jesus Christ. Let's rejoice and proclaim this Easter time. Jesus weeps when he sees how we already have the answer, but we're still busy looking for it elsewhere. Let's proclaim the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let's uh, uh, rejoice in it and celebrate this Easter season. God bless. Thank you. This is my confidence. You never fail